Well, good morning. Happy Sunday. Yay. <laughs> I'm here in my studio. It's me, KP. I'm at the Moon and the Maker headquarters of Rubber Moon Art Stamps. Yay. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Um, so it's Sunday morning, and it is already day 14. Oh, my gosh. Where does time go? Probably get tired of me saying the same things every single time, but every morning I come in, and I get all set up, and I'm so amazed that uh, the time flies so fast. But you know what they say about time flying? It happens when you're having fun, and I've been having a great time. I don't know if I've already said this. I probably have, but I really, really look forward to um, 11 o'clock every day now. I don't know what I'm going to do when the month ends. We'll have to find another project. <laughs> so today we are again on day 14 of World Watercolor Month, and um, I'm here doing a little watercolor every single day. Um, usually, well, so far, always... Um, using rubber stamps and I'm sorry about my unsightly stamps but you know this is how they look when they're well loved right so hopefully I mean your well loved stamps will stay a little bit better than this but of course you know I'm using them constantly in classes and you know just using them constantly and I am not that picky about them um, usually like if I have some really really nice ones that I care about I do keep them on you know, special shelves or special places, and I don't use them. Um, some of my very old, I have some really old um, hero art stamps that were Mary Inglebright's original rubber stamps and also from Laurel Birch. So uh, those obviously I don't really use and I keep them safe, but my personal stamps, um, this is how they look a lot. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> one thing is, is I use our indexing stamps a lot. These are the stamps that stamp the stamps. And so these are the indexers a lot of times and um, I, yeah, they get pretty trashed. So just know that if and when you order rubber moon stamps from us, they come out looking a lot nicer than this, <laughs> right? So sorry about the sirens. It's really loud out there on a, for a Sunday morning, I guess. Um, so today we're going to be working with the same materials we've been working with pretty much every other day. I am keeping things consistent um, by using the same size paper and the same, uh, you know, the same, the same paper. This is 300 pound cold press and um, I'm using my core watercolors, mostly core. I do um, often use a couple other brands, but I try to tell you when that happens. And so sorry about my nails <laughs> today. Um, yeah, they look really exceptionally bad. I've been already in the paint all morning. So uh, job hazard. <laughs> all right. So I have two fresh, clean jars of water here. Um, and for those of you who have not seen my precious water cups, I love these water cups. And the reason why is because they cost me like 50 cents, maybe a dollar, but I think 50 cents at the thrift shop. They are, um, I guess they're like the fish bowls that they use at carnivals um, when you do a coin toss to try to win fish. But also I think they're little vases from just the cheapos from the florist. And I love them because they have this fluted edge. So I can always lean my, leave my brushes there after they're rinsed. So you need to run to the thrift shop and grab you some of those. And then also I wanted to share this with you. Libby, yay, you are, I, you're, I can see you today. Yay, welcome. Also, I will go ahead and say hi to Dana and Deborah. Nice to have you here with me. Um, this is an egg, um, deviled egg platter. And um, I see these all the time at the thrift shop also. And it is great, great, great for a watercolor palette. <clears throat> so those are some of the things I have on my table right now. I am using my number four and my number eight long round brush. And we're going to just dig right in. We're going to see what we can do with some fun blobs. And we're going to work wet on wet. I'm going to show you a couple of fun things that you can do with those blobs. This one I just painted um, right before I came on screen. I want to let you know I have been sort of working a little bit ahead. Like I've been doing 
um, you know, samples ahead of time, but it's Sunday today and I hadn't seen my son in um, three weeks and I had to go pick him up last night. So I didn't really work ahead. And then while well, I was working this morning, like I said, in the paint already, but I was making some color charts. Um, so I have never so far painted out all of my core colors. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been um, taking my core um, color chart here. And I've actually been going through and pulling out all the colors that I have, which I do think I pretty much have every color now. Um, I think I might be missing one or two, but I've been pulling them out in order and then painting them um, on a color chart. Like so, this one's a little big. I actually started it over because it didn't hold all the colors and I want all the colors on one page. So I started a new one and it does take a little bit of time, but I'm going to tell you, it is a fantastic exercise. I'm actually taking a watercolor workshop myself right now, and I've never taken the time to paint out all the colors. And even though I have this color chart um, that does show me all the colors, it's not the same as actually painting them yourself and really taking inventory of what you have. So I'm excited. Um, I'm not going to share all that with you right now. We're going to just stick to our, you know, watercolor for the day. But I am really excited to, um, you know, share with share with you some of the things that I'll be learning in my watercolor class um, and just excited to push the envelope for myself a little bit also. So anyway blobs of color and of course um, you could do this with uh, monochromatic colors so you could do it with all say like all greens or all yellows or um, you know maybe throw in a little surprise color here or there but um, I'm actually doing it with these jewel tones which again I'm going to just show you my messy palette but this is what stays in this little flower palette all the time so we're going to work wet on wet and I'm going to just show you how I did this and then the reason why and we're going to, I'm going to do a couple of them and I hope if you have some watercolors and some paints handy you know in a, in a jar of water and your brush that maybe you will also uh, do this along with me it's fun it's really mindless kind of just play um, and you can see some really fun things that you can do with it when we're done. So um, this one, I'm going to do exactly pretty much the same for this first one, okay? So I'm just going to lay down, again, uh, puddles of water. Um, and they're pretty, you know, substantial. They're not, I'm not just, I'm not just moistening the paper. I'm actually, can you see that? I'm actually putting puddles of water down. And then I'm going to go in with my first color, which is, I'm going to put this here so you can see a little bit better, um, is my opera, my opera pink, which is a Winsor Newton color. And I'm just going to let that flow in the water. And I'm going to do another blob or puddle here. I am going to be careful not to let the puddles touch. I mean, well, if you want them to bleed together, then you can let them touch. <clears throat> and I'm going to put a little bit of that same pink here also, but I'm just going to switch it up a bit and put it in some different spots. And then a third one as well. And a little bit more of the upper pink. And then I'm just going to start with some of these other colors that I have in my palette. I have a little bit of transparent pyro orange, which I love. I'm going to be maybe a little stronger with that color. You know, I'm, I'm keeping unity and variety. I'm making it unified by using the same colors, but I'm really switching it up and making it not balanced as far as where the colors go and things like that. And now I'm going to dip into my yellow here. And um, oh, I just when I have pink and orange and yellow together like this, I always think of sherbet. Or is it sherbet? <laughs> I can never decide. But you get the idea. When you mix a little bit of this cadmium orange, I have a little bit of pyrrole, transparent pyrrole orange here, and a little bit of cadmium orange here. 
and you mix um, a little bit of the orange and that, that pink, it makes like a really nice soft corally color. So you can play with it just a little bit. I'm mostly just dropping in wet on wet. <clears throat> A little bit of my green gold. And finally some magenta. And you can see, can you see that when I'm dropping colors in, how it starts to push against it? It really... Get some of those blossoms and some of that those organic shapes kind of flowing in there. And remember when your colors mix right on your paper, you're going to get some really pretty, um, you know, color combinations and some really nice translucent overlays where like for example my cobalt teal and that pink made a really nice little lavender color down there in the corner so you can enhance that a little bit by plopping down some more color if you want to and then you can also make some harsh harder not, not harsh harsh wouldn't be the right word but some harder lines by going in with a little bit of color and sort of outlining and that'll give you a little bit harder of an edge So just really, I'm going to seriously encourage you to just have fun with this. Drop in colors, see what unexpected kind of combinations that you can get. Mix, you know, even if you just get a big sheet of paper. And for this, I, if you wanted to experiment, I'm going to tell you I would not practice with 300-pound um, watercolor paper. If you wanted to just play with some, you know, sort of splotches and, blotches and dropping wet on wet, then just get a cheaper, like even a student grade um, pad and just go to town with different color combinations to see even things maybe that you don't like to just see what happens and transpires on the page as you, as you move along. Um, and then when you find ones that you really like and you want to create a little piece of art or say a card or something like that, then you can always Pull out your nicer paper and go to town with that. If an area does muddy that you don't and you don't like it, then just get your brush nice and clean and dry and thirsty and pull the color right out. All right, so I kind of, I like the way they look. Now they might lighten up a little more than I would like. So if you feel like they're gonna dry a little too pale, you can obviously go in and you know add a little bit more darker value and smush around a little bit more. All right, but I, I like those. They look pretty good. And so I can let those dry. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and work on a second one. I'm just using maybe some shades of green. Or, well, I don't know. I was thinking about <clears throat> doing something a little more monochromatic. Yeah, we'll just do a couple shades of green. Um... 
I'm going to pull out my sap green. I have an olive green here. I have the, sort of this yellow. can't remember what this yellow is. It's um, nickel azo yellow right here. And then I have an olive green, a sap green. And I have a chromium green, I think, in my palette over here. And then also green gold. So <clears throat> I'm sure I have enough greens to sort of do what I'm thinking. So I'm going to go this way on the paper this time. Well, actually, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Never mind. <laughs> doesn't matter if I go this way or that way because uh, if I turn it, I'm so confused. Never mind. <laughs> Just And don't ask me to measure anything either. So I'm just dropping in my greens. Maybe a little yellow here at the top. I could even use a little cobalt. And some chromium green oxide, why not? All right, I'm going to do another one. Again, just blobby shapes, just have fun and not even really, I'm just manipulating the paint. I'm not really trying to make a certain shape again. If I want to go in and harden some of those lines, I can. And I really like that little drop of cobalt in there, so I'm going to do that again. And let's do it one more time. Three times a charm, right? Started with a little bit different base layer there. And I want to deepen and darken this bottom just a little bit. So I'm going in with some more sap green and Dropping it in. I want to lighten it just a little bit. So I'm actually dropping water, plain water in it and pulling it up just a little bit with my thirsty brush again. Just for a little sort of highlight there in the top. <clears throat> All right. And I'm going to let those dry, okay? And I know it's sort of hard to see because I know it's real shiny from the water. <clears throat> so now here I'm going to take this one. Um, let's see. This one is my original one, and it should be good and dry. And then now is when I'm going to take my stamps. And, of course, you could use, um, you know, I could use like a hot pink if I wanted to. Or if you want it to really stand out, then you're going to want to use a black I'm going to, I think I'm going to try using my Moonlight Duo Black just because it's a little bit juicier, but you could also, of course, use your permanent ink. And this is where I'm going to take my, my word stamps here. And this is great if you're doing a journal or a card, of course. So that is one way to use those blobs. <clears throat> and then of course it would be, or um, you could use like a really dark color. Um, so even maybe we'll take our Payne's gray. 
and we are going to sort of outline this But I want to, again, leave my saved whites. I don't want to go right up to the border of my little blobs that I created. I'm going to just paint around all that. And, of course, this would look really cute. Remember our tape trick? If we had taped this off so you could leave a nice white border, I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it just um, by hand so it might not be very perfect, but and I, I think this would have looked really cool with any color that I um, decided to put in the background. It doesn't have to be dark. I could have just done like a nice wash around it, but I thought this dark Payne's gray would really make those words pop. because my tongue is totally hanging out. <laughs> oh, does anybody else do that? Does anybody else stick out their tongue when they paint? I mean, it's not like the whole time, but. When I did, I got a little close to my edge right there, but that's okay. I'll forgive myself. Well, you saw me, I just laid more water down because I want to try to make this spread a little bit quicker. So if you lay down a little more water, you can plop in your paint and it will move a little bit better. Sorry, my brush, the tip of my brush um, is a little messed up. I think I might have to try to re, uh, reform it if I can, but I might need to get a new brush. Ta-da! So, and then I think this would be really fun too to go ahead and take some either white gouache or even just maybe your paint markers after this is dry and do some fun little mark making around there. And then we'll take this one. I think this is pretty much dry enough. And now, of course, I could use um, a pen. I could use um, more watercolor. As long as this is good and dry, I could use more watercolor or I could also use a stamp. I have some really great stamps that would work from that for this. Um, 
oh goodness, uh, in the, some of the stamp strap collections, but you can easily then just turn these into trees. We won't do any stamping on this just because I don't have those stamps handy. I'm going to use this. Let's see what color. I can't remember what brown. This is burnt umber here in my little core palette. Again, really important that this these blobs be really dry. I'm not 100% sure that they're 100% dry, but if it bleeds a little bit, it's okay. I just want to at least be able to show you how easily that you can take those same blobs just with a different color palette and turn it into different imagery pretty easily and pretty fun because they're just fun to create. Ta -da! So with the same blobs, look at what you can do. <laughs> Pretty fun, right? And like no stress, no, no anguish over messing up your white paper. <laughs> no, I don't know, just no fuss. I'm going to, I think, I'm hoping this is dry enough that I can maybe doodle in a little bit with my white paint markers. <clears throat> you could also... You know, use a gel pen. I don't know if I have any gel pens that work right now. Mine might all be dried up. You could also use, um, like I said, gouache. Sorry if that's annoying. These, I find that these, I like them a lot, but they stay really like watery for a while. You gotta really shake them up. <clears throat> So I don't know, let's just, play with whatever kind of marks that you like to make. Maybe you're a Zentangler and maybe you can go in and use whatever fancy white pens that you like <clears throat> to, um, you know, create some fun patterns back here. So this one, a little more mixed media-ish. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing and I really just want to fill it in with some, you know, mark making things. And of course you wouldn't have to fill it in entirely, but now that I've already started, why stop now, right? Right now I'm just going crazy. <laughs> mm. 
but there now it's all filled in <clears throat> although I don't really like um don't really like how I did those so I could take another little bit of paint and even though it's not really opaque it will still you know work enough to kind of cover that up <clears throat> so ta-da there you go day number 14 of world watercolor month woohoo <laughs> and now tomorrow we're almost going to be at halfway right because or do we have a 31st to this month? I can't remember. But either way, it's about halfway through. I can't believe it. I hope that you've been having as much fun as I have. Um, and I hope that you get to, you know, break out your paints and do some of this stuff. And I hope that you'll also consider sharing whatever you do over on our Let's Get Makey page or Rubber Moon, wherever you feel comfortable sharing it. We would love to see it. <clears throat> um, if you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Um, I hope that all of you got to see who the winners were from the drawing the other day. I know that's not really part of this, but um, I think it was, oh gosh, now I can't remember. So I hope everybody was notified. We're going to send you your stamps um, coming up this week. And goodness, I don't know if I have anything else to tell you about right now, um, but it doesn't matter because I'll see you tomorrow, right? <clears throat> Oh, thanks. Jan says, <laughs> Jan says July has 31 days. So tomorrow we'll be um, just about halfway through. And let's see who else is here. I wanted to make sure to say hello to Karen. So happy you could join us. And um, Libby, I'm glad you got. I want to thank you and Jack for being here. <clears throat> and let's see. And Juliet, how are you? I hope you're doing well. I can't wait to see all of your watercolor -y goodness. So have a wonderful day and go get making and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Now, I wanted to remind you tomorrow morning, we are going to post a video at 11. I'm going to be out of town. I have a meeting tomorrow. Um, so I won't be able to be here at that time. Um, but we're going to still post a video you know, a pre-recorded video for day number 15. So, but I will see you back here live on Tuesday morning at 11. Um, have a great rest of your Sunday and I'll, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> oh, and Jan says it's Sherbert, not Sherbet. <laughs> see y'all later.